from Rixie. This is Debuff, and I'm your host, Steve Skeels. Today, I'll be talking about Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, the Game Awards nominations, and the Big House Smash Tournament getting cancelled by a Nintendo cease and desist. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is a prequel to one of the best games of this generation, and maybe one of the best games ever. This title aims to bring some much needed answers to the events set before Breath of the Wild, albeit with a totally different style of gameplay. Released on November 20th, Age of Calamity currently has a 79 critic score and an 8.1 user score on Metacritic. So it's doing well, and I assume it's been selling well too. The previous Hyrule Warriors game was definitely a good game, but it was all based on fan service, with tons of characters and nods to the Zelda franchise. It was certainly pretty popular, but it was not really a must-play for all Zelda fans. The idea that this game, Age of Calamity, will explain the backstory of the war against Calamity Ganon is much cooler in my opinion, and should be a huge drawing point for pretty much anyone who played Breath of the Wild. But honestly, there wasn't a lot of story in that game. Most people were really into it just to experience Nintendo's take on an open world game. Unfortunately, I don't know too many people who are interested in Age of Calamity itself, as the warrior-style gameplay is way different and definitely isn't for everyone. If you're somehow unfamiliar, the Warriors, or Musou games, are more about hack-and-slash combat against large swaths of enemies. Battles take place on maps where you typically have some other objectives, like capturing bases, while taking down tons of mobs and occasionally some difficult enemies. From what I have heard, this game feels more like something in between a typical Warriors game and Breath of the Wild itself. It's obviously not an open world game or anything, but there are elements and features taken right from Breath of the Wild. For example, this game still retains parrying and the flurry rush as moves you can perform in combat, so it feels a bit closer to Breath of the Wild than maybe some of the other previous Warriors titles. Potentially the most interesting part for fans will be playing as the other characters. Aside from Link, there are 18 playable characters total. This includes Zelda, Impa, the Four Champions, and many more. It's a pretty stacked roster if you're into that kind of thing. And each character has unique move sets that will separate them from one another so you can find your favorites. And of course, if you enjoyed Breath of the Wild, the story here is apparently very good too. A lot of people are saying it's well done in that it is actually incorporated into the missions themselves, not just the cutscenes. So instead of running a bunch of missions where you just kill enemies, capturing territory and the like, the missions will actually reflect what's going on with the plot. And personally, I do think the warrior style gameplay is a good choice to illustrate the scale of the battle against Calamity Ganon. You aren't going to be just fighting a few enemies like you may have in Breath of the Wild, now you're actually taking on a whole army. The only real issue I've seen people complain about so far is the performance in some areas. The demo that came out gave people some serious issues on one of the early missions, but apparently it never gets that bad again. There are certainly still slowdowns, but from what I've been told, it isn't enough to ruin the experience unless you're somebody that has zero tolerance for that kind of thing. And ideally, they'll patch the performance a bit later on. I've also seen that some people are saying they are disappointed in the story. Most people I've seen are saying it's very good, like I said, but there are some split opinions on it. I won't give any spoilers for what I've heard, but I will say that it just isn't what many had anticipated. Overall, I do enjoy these types of games, and I think it's cool that they've been doing these crossovers. Something like this is a really neat idea to get more lore on the world, but not have to distract the Zelda team from their next game. I think if you're a fan of Breath of the Wild, it's certainly something to look into, and since there's a demo, you can give it a shot and make sure you like the gameplay first. The 2020 Game Awards nominations were just announced and are now available for voting. I'm not going to go through every game, of course, but I did want to hit some highlights and give my opinion on a few of the major categories. Overall, the list doesn't really surprise me. Games this year have been pretty good, though we've seen a lot of delays. Unfortunately, big titles like Cyberpunk won't be in this round of voting, and we'll have to save that for 2021. But some of the bigger titles seen are The Last of Us Part Two, Ghost of Tsushima, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Hades. Three of those that I just mentioned were PlayStation 4 exclusives, which just goes to show how they're still killing it at the end of this generation. Overall, Sony has 22 nominations total. It's cool to see Hades is listed in so many categories as well. 
I really enjoyed it and I think it deserves all the praise it's getting, so I'm happy to see that it's in a lot of these larger categories. And now I'll get to some of those themselves. Starting at the top, of course, with the biggest category available, Game of the Year. We've got Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and The Last of Us Part II. Personally, there's a few that I will immediately say have no chance. The Last of Us had too much controversy. Final Fantasy was good, but it's just part one and definitely not everybody enjoys JRPGs. And while Doom Eternal definitely changes things from Doom 2016, it's still just going to be more of the same in many people's eyes. I think that Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, or Animal Crossing will be the main contenders here. I'd like to think Animal Crossing could get it, since that really was the game of early 2020 for me. I'll always look at it as what helped me survive quarantine, and it's a game many different kind of gamers play. There was some hate on it for what people said was lack of content, but I think most people I know got tons of time out of it, so I disagree with that. On the other hand, Hades has definitely taken the gaming community by storm, and it is a true showing for how roguelites can be story-driven and a little bit different than what most people are used to. I found the game extremely polished, it had awesome combat, and it's just all around another great title from Supergiant. However, my personal pick will probably be Ghost of Tsushima. That game was just beautiful, and while it's another open world game, I felt like it changed enough that it really makes it stand out among some of the best. And I thought the combat was pretty perfect. We'll see, but I would definitely bet it's going to be one of these three, and like I said, I'm kind of hoping for Ghost of Tsushima myself. Moving on, best game direction is more of these same titles. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Half-Life Alex, and The Last of Us Part II. Personally, I'm not really sure about this category. I think Half-Life could get it, as it's currently a one-of-a-kind VR experience, but I personally hope that Hades gets this one if it doesn't win Game of the Year. Then we've got Best Narrative. Again, many of the same. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, The Last of Us Part II, and 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. I'm biased, and I think I would like Final Fantasy to get this one since I loved it, and I think it both added to and definitely changed up things from the original, but I'm not really sure it can take it. Everyone's got their own taste and narrative, of course, and I could definitely see Hades get this one too, though I don't really think tons of people go into that game playing it specifically for the story. This one's a toss-up, and I'll wait and see. Next, we've got Art Direction, again, many of the same, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and The Last of Us Part II. These are all beautiful games, but if Hades or Ori doesn't win this one, then I'm going to call bullshit. So there's a lot of other categories, uh, with many of these games already mentioned, and some new ones appearing, but there's only uh, two other categories I really want to touch on. We've got Best Indie, which at this point, indie is kind of just a buzzword. Pretty much any game that isn't AAA can be called an indie. So there's probably tons of things that would fit in here. But they've got listed Carry On, Fall Guys, Hades, Spelunky 2, and Spiritfarer. I guess Ori isn't really considered an indie anymore, so unfortunately it's not listed here, as I know a ton of people love those games. I think I'd have to give this one to Hades, as that's even listed for Game of the Year itself. But it's cool to see some of these other smaller titles like Carry On get nominated, which I know a lot of people that played really enjoyed. Fall Guys was also big, and I think it could have a shot, but it's kind of fallen off at this point. There are some others that I wish made it here, a couple I really enjoyed, like Other Side, Monster Train, but I get that those didn't make as big of a splash as these others. The last category that I think is really cool is Innovation in Accessibility. This has Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Grounded, Hyperdot, The Last of Us Part II, and Watch Dogs Legion. I haven't played any of the others other than Last of Us, uh, but that game has tons of features to allow many different kind of disabled gamers the chance to play it. They worked with people to specifically make it the most accessible game ever, and it would be really cool to see it win. There's a lot of other categories and maybe some other favorite titles on the list, so I definitely recommend going to check it out and uh, cast your vote for whatever games you think should be winning these. It's always fun to participate, and I'm hoping for another good show of Game Awards this year, even if it'll most likely be a smaller online event with Jeff Keighley just talking on the stage. The last topic for today is a sad one. The Big House is a huge event for competitive Super Smash Bros., a competitive scene that Nintendo has never taken too kindly to, for whatever reason. On November 19th, the Big House Twitter account tweeted out that they have to cancel the upcoming online event 
due to a cease and desist from Nintendo of America. Essentially, they were told that they do not have permission to host the event, and they say uh, the main reason for this is their use of Slippy, a rollback netcode project for Super Smash Bros. Melee that is utilized to reduce latency in the games, among other things. I understand that the use of this would also require using a Melee ROM on PC to participate, though you can have a legal backup of your own version, many companies don't really see it that way. I do get that most people will just download the ROM illegally, but it still sucks that they can't just go ahead and use their own. Uh, Nintendo still has a problem with it. Also, this cancellation not only affects their Melee tournament, but the Ultimate one as well. It really is unfortunate, as the Smash community is extremely dedicated and has received almost no support from Nintendo over the years. Kotaku reached out to Nintendo and posted a statement by Nintendo in an article by Ian Walker. In so many words, Nintendo's response was that they appreciate what the community does, and they want to support them as they have in the past, but they don't like the use of Slippy and Melee ROMs, which they just refer to as illegal copies of the game. It really is unfortunate, as during this pandemic there isn't much choice but to play online, and Nintendo is shutting down one of the few ways that these fans were going to have an outlet this year. They've repeatedly caused issues for the community before, and it's sad to see it continue in a year where a lot of people just want something to look forward to. I really don't get why this is a big deal to Nintendo. I know they've always been protective of their IP, and if people were actually doing something in direct competition with them, then yeah, shut it down. But what is this tournament even doing? Canceling a, an event for a 19-year-old game is pretty ridiculous. If they think they're losing out on money that the tournament coordinators are making, then I feel like Nintendo should be putting together events themselves. And if they're more so just concerned with the use of ROMs, that's pretty ridiculous because they're not going to be making any money off of people buying used copies of the game in the first place. Not to mention, almost anyone that is into Melee and would be playing a ROM probably already owns a copy of the game and just uses the emulator so that they can play online. Also, Smash Bros. Ultimate is great, but it's never going to replace Melee for a lot of people, and they just don't have an option to play online other than through the use of an emulator. In the end, Nintendo is going to do what they want to do, and they're infamous for cease and desist orders. Sometimes it's for a decent reason, but I hate to see it happen like this. Hopefully they get it together and find a way to work with the competitive scene, but until then, they're going to be feeling a lot of heat from the community. Debuff is hosted by me, Steve Skeels, edited and mixed by Mason Carlton. Follow us on Instagram at debuffpod. That's debuffpod. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next one.